Welcome to our posts. Today we will see stories of r slash am I the a-hole. Am I the a-hole for yelling at my sister that my wedding is not her wedding? I, 29F, am planning my wedding for September of this year. It's the end of summer and also the month I met my fiancé. My sister, Kat, 33F, was supposed to get married five years ago, but her partner died in a motorcycle accident. She was devastated and had a hard time. Since then, she's been very gloomy, and her relationships don't last long. She goes to therapy on and off. When I told my family that I was getting married, Kat was visibly sad, so my mom asked me to involve her in the planning and to ask for her opinion to make her feel part of it. However, she didn't agree with my choice of September, thinking it's a bad month for a wedding. She also didn't like the colors I picked or the dress I wanted. I tried to listen to her sometimes. At one point, she said, I can't believe you'll be the first daughter and why, not our, father is going to walk down the aisle. I was gutted by her comment. I'm not having a religious ceremony, my fiancé's best friend got a license to officiate our marriage, so it's not that serious. With that in mind, I'm planning the wedding to reflect our personalities. My best friend suggested that the bridesmaids wear different colored dresses, but my sister didn't agree. She made some comments like, it'll look like a gay pride parade, and, you're turning your wedding into a gay wedding by listening to all your of friends' suggestions. Yes, my best friend is gay, but we have similar tastes, so his opinions are highly valued because they match mine. Last week, we were organizing the entrance of our bridesmaids and best men. In our culture, we call them, godfathers slash godmothers, and they enter together. I told her that my best friend would enter with his boyfriend. My sister then said my wedding was going to be an absolute circus, and that, as my older sister, she should make me see reason. She insisted that two men shouldn't enter the ceremony together because not all guests would understand and appreciate it. Her comments were very annoying and homophobic. She continued with her remarks and even called my fiancé to get his opinion. At some point, I was fed up and yelled, you're out of line because this is my wedding and not yours. Have your own wedding and plan it as you want. I was very angry, and my mom came from the garden to see what was happening. Kat started crying and went to her room. It's been five days, and she's giving me the silent treatment. She told my mom that she won't be attending my wedding. It's very annoying, she tries to make me feel uncomfortable. For example, if she's in the kitchen and I enter, she leaves. Yesterday, my mom said I should apologize because my sister is fragile and this topic makes her suffer. However, I don't think I'm that much of an a-hole. My mom said that yelling at her was an a-hole move, even if I was right. Top comments. Not the a-hole I am sorry for your sister's loss, truly. It sounds as though she has yet to finish her grieving process and this is very very triggering for her. Every bride deserves the wedding they want as long as it's done with respect and in congruency with their partner's wishes. Everyone else is a sidelined and attendee. Your sister is ruining what should be a joyful time. Your mom is enabling her behavior by making you the bad guy. You need to sit your parents down and discuss with them all the things your sister has done and tell them she clearly needs help and you don't appreciate having to put up with her mistreatment of you because she's in a fragile state. Your happiness is just as important as her grief. She's planning the wedding her and her finance would have had not ready to accept this as your ceremony and day. Edit to add, if your mom is saying you owe the apology because weddings are hard in your sister, then your mother actually owes you the apology for forcing you to involve the sister, when mom knows it's going to be hard on her. It's been years, your sister needs therapy. If your mom and sister won't go to your wedding because you finally shut down your sister's unceasing suggestions, well, it's them that will miss out. Proceed without them. Not the a-hole. Not the a-hole. Apparently it's family members sticking up for crappy people who act crappy to the point one loses their temper around them day. Yes, adults like Opie should be able to control their temper and moderate their behavior. But. We have a saying for this, people who can dish it out but not take it. People like OP's sister can't expect to be aggressively rude, demeaning, negatively opinionated, and unpleasant without having some pushback on that. And if they ignore more gentle social cues, they're going to get a verbal shotgun unloaded in their face. Tell your mom that the problem isn't that sister is too sensitive, 
It's that she's too insensitive and maybe your mom should get on that problem with some belated parenting efforts to help your sister adjust course out of being crappy. Next story. Am I the a-hole for leaving without explanation after mother-in-law pretended not to hear me? I 32F have a 7MO daughter with my husband 34M. My country does ensure a long maternity leave for up to two years, however I am self-employed and cannot afford to lose my clients so I try to work while my daughter is sleeping and during the weekends. Lately she's been teething so I'm operating on little to no sleep. I have an issue with my mother-in-law. She does what she wants despite people asking her not to and then says, oops or denies doing it. Things like that. It was annoying before the baby but after she was born it has become insufferable. Husband talked to her and set boundaries, so she stopped doing that when my husband is present but she was still doing it when it's only me in the room. So we agreed she cannot visit when husband is not at home and husband is not to leave me alone with her. Because of these boundaries we did not see them for 1.5 months. They live two hours away and we did not find a mutually good time. They finally came over last Sunday. 20 minutes into the visit my father-in-law wants to see a lawnmower that has broken down so my husband goes into the backyard with him, leaving me, the baby and mother-in-law inside. She's drinking coffee and eating cake. She sits next to my daughter on her playmat and tries to feed her some of her cake. I immediately told her no, she can't have that. Mother-in-law pretends not to hear me and proceeds putting her spoon to my daughter's closed mouth. I repeat stop doing that, she can't have cake yet and definitely not from your spoon. Still she pretends not to hear me. I repeat it again, still nothing and now there's cake on my baby's face and she's fussing. So I grab my daughter and go to my husband and father-in-law, subtly gesturing him to come back inside. After about 5 minutes mother-in-law decided to go outside too and was approaching me and the baby. I gestured to my husband again and he made an annoyed face. I had no energy to deal with any of this so I stood up, went inside, grabbed baby bag and car keys and went to the car without saying a word. Mother-in-law asked me where I was going and I ignored her. I drove to my sister's, which is about 15 minute drive. There were some missed calls from my husband so I texted him where we were and that we'll be back in the evening. It was time for my daughter's nap and she fell asleep breastfeeding so my sister told me to go sleep too. After she woke up and had her milk my sister took her and told me to go back to sleep. I slept 3 hours in total and my phone was on silent so my husband's calls were ignored and apparently his parents left disappointed and mother-in-law cried. My husband is furious I did this. We're still fighting about it. He can't believe I was so rude and took the baby away when his parents came to see her after such a long time. He's angry I couldn't have waited a few minutes so that he could finish talking about the lawnmower. I told him I'm too exhausted to deal with this crap. He left me alone with mother-in-law despite our agreement, be it only 10 minutes, so I left. Am I the a-hole? Top comments. Not the a-hole. Your mother-in-law should respect your boundaries and especially when it's about your baby. And your husband should have your back on that. I do understand that it must be uncomfortable and hurt him, seeing his mother cry and be upset, but then he should talk to her about it instead of making you the bad person. The only thing I think you did wrong was that you didn't pick your daughter up after the first time you said it and mother-in-law didn't listen. Maybe that would have made things go more smooth, but then again it shouldn't really be necessary. I do think that it is important that you stand up for your boundaries, and your husband should support you on that. Sorry if my English isn't perfect, it's not my first language, but I did my best. Not the a-hole. But you have a husband problem as much as a mother-in-law problem. So mother-in-law was ignoring your instructions about your child, so you went to your husband so he could deal with his mother. Except a lawnmower, which would still be there after the conversation with you finished, was more important than his agitated wife and child. And instead of checking if you were okay, he had a go at you for making his mother cry. You need to have a serious talk with your husband about how much he is actually supporting you with your child and with his mother. When you have that conversation, do not let him distract you with, but they were upset. Mother-in-law behaved inappropriately, he ignored you, so you left. Their behavior created the issue, you let him know where you were and when you'd be back. Do not let him turn any of this back on to you. He and his mother have a lot to apologize for. Not the a-hole. What is it with older people and feeding cake to babies? 
My grandma tried to give cake to my daughter when she was three or four months old. Your mother blatantly ignored me while trying to force feed our baby something they could choke on. So I took our baby to safety when your conversation took precedence over making your mother stop endangering our child. What's rude is guests coming into my home and endangering my baby by ignoring me. If you agree that I shouldn't have a say in my own home, then why are you even my husband? Not the a-hole honestly he should be stepping up a lot more with the baby to ensure you get more sleep. But then can you really trust him if he's going to let his mother stick her germ-covered cake-piled spoon in his baby's mouth because he can't say no to her? Defending his mother implies he agrees with her and is therefore complicit in MIL's transgressions, it's easier to rip into his wife than confront his parents over his mother's lack of respect. Next story. Am I the a-hole for not accommodating someone because she never spoke up? I, 28F, recently went out with a few friends and some of their friends. Eventually we were discussing where to get food. I suggested a few places like pizza, Chinese, sushi, Korean, etc. People gave opinions, like they were slash weren't feeling XYZ or they have certain allergies. This one girl, Abby, never spoke up even when I specifically asked her. I didn't know her well but wanted to include her, but she would just mumble and not give a definitive answer. Eventually we settled on Korean food. There were few people in the group who weren't too familiar with the food so I explained the menu. Everyone seemed to enjoy the food and I thought that was that. Towards the end of the meal, Abby started whining about the food. She didn't like this, she didn't like that, she was unfamiliar with the food, she couldn't even choose the restaurant. Few people reminded her that I specifically asked her where she wanted to eat and it was a group consensus. Just for the record, I'm an introvert but can be very opinionated and can speak up for myself. I asked Abby why she didn't speak up earlier and she responded she didn't want to upset anyone. My tone turned harsher and said, well you could have said something earlier instead of whining and causing a scene now. Why bring it up at the end of it if you didn't want to cause trouble? Abby's face turned red as she got up, paid, and left. Am I the a-hole for embarrassing her? Top comments. Not the a-hole. She didn't say anything when directly asked. She can suck it up now. There was no reason for her to whine about the food after the fact. Plus trying foods you are unfamiliar with is a good thing, you never know if you like something unless you try it. But even if you don't like a new food you should be an adult about it and not whine. Not the a-hole, and I don't agree with people saying the subject had already been addressed. The biggest question of all, the why question, hadn't been discussed, and you had a valid point. If she didn't want to cause trouble, fine, but then don't, cause trouble. Quran food is so diverse and caters to most dietary restrictions. It's probably one of the best things for groups. You're also in your late 20s if you can't speak up by now well good luck in life Abby. Not the a-hole. Next story. Am I the a-hole for walking out of the house and staying out for the whole day while family were visiting after my parents brought up my older sister's not adoption again? My parents are hosting extended family for a couple of weeks. It's my maternal and paternal grandparents as well as my aunt and uncle on my paternal side. It was going okay until last weekend when my parents brought up a topic of conversation that I, 17M, am so tired of hearing and being pulled into. So let me explain the non-adoption and why it bugs me. My dad had a kid before he met my mom. My half-sister, 24F. My dad had primary custody of my half-sister, her mom was in and out of her life. My parents met when my half-sister was two and got married when she was four. Her mom was in and out of prison, was on and off drugs and alcohol and she was really disruptive to my half-sister's life and to my parents. She refused to stay away but refused to be a good mom too. When I was two or three her mom offered to walk away for good but only if they removed any chance that she could be sued for child support, etc. My mom was willing to adopt my half-sister. The three adults wanted this to happen but because of my half-sister's age, her wishes held a lot of weight and she didn't want my mom to adopt me, and it never happened. So her mom kept the back and forth for a few more years before giving up the relationship with my half-sister completely. My parents were so upset that my half-sister rejected having a stable and loving mom in my mom for a woman who even she admitted was so mean to her and didn't take good care of her. But my half-sister never really liked my mom from what I witnessed. 
It's a really big deal to my parents and I have grown up hearing about it way more than I need to. They told me details I didn't need to know, when I was too young to be hearing them, they would suck the fun out of things bringing it up. And I know they hold it against my half-sister. They think my sisters, 14F and 13F, and I do too but the lack of closeness has nothing to do with the not adoption and everything to do with our half-sister not wanting to be close to us. I asked my parents to stop bringing it up around us a few times. They ignored me. Until they said they got it and would listen. But last weekend my parents brought it up while family was over and I was so not wanting to hear about it so I got up in the middle of breakfast and left the house and didn't come back all day. My parents were so mad at me for that. I told them I couldn't listen to them talk about it again and they couldn't help themselves but I wasn't going to turn it into a fight to stop them. They told me walking out without permission is bad enough but when we have family here is disrespectful and they told me I'm old enough to know and do better. This was a sore point the whole week. Am I the a-hole? Top comments. The three adults wanted this to happen but because of my half-sister's age, her wishes held a lot of weight, how old was she at the time? Too much math. If the mother and father wanted to terminate the mother's parental rights it wouldn't have required the step-parent to adopt or the kid's consent. That doesn't make sense. Leaving all of that aside, a 17 years old excusing themselves from a conversation that shouldn't include them and siblings and just plays on repeat is not the a-hole. Opie replies. She was about September 10th I think. But I don't know all the exacts because I don't remember it happening, I just remember the aftermath. You can't terminate your parental rights in most US states without someone willing to adopt. They don't want to take chances with people falling into financial issues and not having a recognized person to support, i.e. pay child support, for the kid. Not the a-hole, your parents are beating a dead horse, your stepsisters not wanting to be adopted. You have told them to stop bringing it up to you. If they want to have the conversation they need to talk to the person who apparently still is refusing to be adopted. Question, why do they try to drag you into the conversation? You had nothing to do with the non-adoption. Opie replies. I don't really know but my theory is they want it be a big deal for the whole family and maybe my half-sister will regret her choice and apologize or something. Not the a-hole, you told them you were tired of this topic and that they should never bring it up in your presence again, but they did. I bet your relatives did also all know about this topic already since your parents seem to bring it up all the time. So your parents are the a-holes for bringing up a topic everyone is already tired of, ranting about your half-sister's personal decisions and accusing you of disrespectful behavior for leaving, which at this point was a fully understandable action. Also I don't know why your action should be considered as disrespectful if you hung around your extended family for the past weeks, I mean it's their fault for bringing up this topic again and not yours for enforcing the consequences of their stupid actions. It sounds more like they feel but hurt for you not staying and taking on their side in this story. I hope you guys like this video if you did make sure like, comment, share and subscribe the channel our posts.